Hello, you are listening to Philip Mollica's Consciousness Evolution. Our home is at philipmollica.substack.com. Please subscribe to receive new columns and audios directly to your inbox. We offer free subscriptions or you may support us with a paid account. At this point, all content is freely available to all, but we definitely always appreciate the financial support if you see the value in our offerings. Also, please give us a like if you enjoy the content, and comments and questions are always welcome and appreciated. Audios are also available now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. This column is entitled, Primary versus Secondary Experience, Using Our Discernment to Our Greatest Benefit. With all the unrest and unpleasantness in the news and in our communities, I was recently reminded of a technique, an evaluation, a process of offering ourselves ease and perspective so that these things don't spill out into our lives and moments. It is simple, easy to understand, and easy to implement. And it also helps us root out where our media and bad actors wish to manipulate us through propaganda and efforts to instill fear and create divisions amongst us. That process is the evaluation of primary versus secondary experience. Primary experience is what we experience directly in our moment-to-moment, day-to-day, who we interact with, what we do, what happens to us. Secondary experience can safely be categorized as everything else news, happenings in other parts of the world, everything outside of our direct sensory perception. This is an extremely useful and helpful differentiation to make. Where this becomes important is in discerning what is important to us and what we are paying attention to. For what we make important and what we pay attention to, we create more of. When we cast our attention out into the world, we are subject to the energies and movements of others that may or may not have bearing on us. We can be, and often are, affected by our attention to outside sources. In this current climate, it is almost always negative and can be frightful and disconcerting. Our attention also makes us manipulable by those who would wish to influence us and or create fear in us for their own agendas. When we succumb to influence by outside sources through secondary experience, we then bring that influence into our own direct or primary experience. We may feel fearful, angry, dissatisfied, depressed. How can we then not express those feelings into our primary experience and those around us? The answer is, we cannot. As we view the bombs and wars and duplicity and lies and exploitation and abuse from our secondary experience, it spills over into our primary experience and expression. We risk setting off bombs and starting wars within our own household, our own communities, with our neighbors and loved ones. Now we have unnecessarily taken secondary experience and cast it into our private primary experience. This rarely ends well and is a recipe for personal disaster. We create what we do not want. Therefore, the evaluation of primary and secondary experience is of the utmost importance if we wish to seed personal satisfaction and our own value fulfillment as our primary goal. It begins with an understanding that everything that exists in secondary experience is not primary experience. In other words, it really does not affect us unless we allow it to. Our minds and brains may fight to make things important based on our guidelines and opinions. We may feel it is our responsibility to feel a certain way about what we observe. We may feel that the principle of something is what we must pay attention to. For if we do not, 
it may well affect us in a projected future. Two things from the previous paragraph that I must point out that will be clues to us when we are getting out of our boat and making something important. One, in my experience, standing on principle has never worked out in my favor. It sets up a conflict that is unnecessary by projecting my own beliefs and guidelines on others who may not share my principle. Right or wrong, we do not make others' choices, and it is not our business what someone else chooses. And two, whenever we are projecting some future unfavorable circumstance or event, we are planting seeds for a probable future that we do not want. If something in our secondary experience is affecting us negatively, it is up to us to decide if it is really affecting us. Chances are, it is not. Projection is projection. It is not now, and it is not objectively real or true yet. So much time and energy is wasted by reacting to secondary experience that could be better spent in cultivating and promoting a loving, aware, and fruitful primary experience. Again, we do not control others or their choices, but when we allow others' choices and secondary experience to affect our primary experience, we make ourselves rife for manipulation and exploitation. If we stay firmly in our own boats with our hands firmly on our own steering wheels and use our time, energy, and intention to create positive developments in our own lives with our loved ones and communities, we become a beacon and template for others to appreciate and follow with their own contributions. In this way, we become a force for well-being instead of a super spreader of despair that keeps humanity mired in dysfunction and discord. Again, the very simple process is to determine if what we are paying attention to is actually having a direct effect on us or not. If not, it is secondary experience and we can safely discard it as not immediately important in our lives. If something becomes important, there will be ample time to address it and make new choices. To someone who thinks they need to control everything, this may seem irresponsible. Bad actors use that responsibility factor to try to influence what people think and do. By limiting our attention and importances to our own direct or primary experience, we buffer ourselves from those bad actors and their influence. This does not mean we turn our heads and ignore what is going on in our world. We have our own guidelines, preferences, and opinions, and those are important. But we can, as I have learned, cast our vote as to what we want and wish to see. We are very powerful, energetic creatures, and casting our vote, even if only in our minds, is enough for us to know and trust that we are having an effect without allowing things to spill over into our own lives. As an example, a great deal of fear porn is being generated about nuclear war and or World War III. In reality, what can any one of us do about what is happening in Ukraine or the Middle East? The answer is nothing. Sure, we can join protests and marches and express our views, but what are we really accomplishing? We are simply creating more conflict and turmoil in the world by expressing it in our private, primary experience. Let us not drop bombs and create warfare in our own households, in our communities. Let us sow peace and cooperation with our loved ones and neighbors. One of the easiest ways to do that is to determine what is primary experience and what is secondary experience 
and then placing our attention and importances on what is truly important. We are important. Our community is important. Our loved ones are important. There is only one place in time that we can accomplish anything. Our point of power is in the present moment. Let us be aware and present and always offer our best selves for ourselves and those around us. In this way, are we a force in the world. In this way, we have the greatest positive effect. Thank you for listening. This is Philip Malka's Conscious Evolution. See you next time.